Alright, so we're in a little bit of a situation. Hi, I'm Amelia. I used to be an operating room nurse till I found out that I was pregnant. So I decided to trade in all of my scrubs so I could be with my family. Come hang out with me as I remodel my home, quilt, restore furniture, and find thrifted goods for my home. Please subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thanks! So this is the first series of our home remodel. And the very first thing we had to tackle was this awful bathroom. It's a tiny little powder room and I just want to pause it right here. You can see the sink is like pretty much in front of the toilet. And that was the big problem. My poor sweet husband would have to sidestep into that bathroom so that he could go pee. Um, the bathroom width is 43 inches and that sink is a 20 inch sink. So you can imagine how cramped this space was. And um, so, you know, I think, I think it had a lot of potential. It's definitely the smallest space in our house that gets probably the most use. It is the only restroom on the main floor. And, uh, you know, in order to get to another bathroom, we have to go up a flight of stairs. So, uh, this is the plan that I have imagined for the space. I want to do wainscoting, a new toilet that's taller, a new sink that's smaller, and a really cool wallpaper with a fun piece of art. Hey, Chris. Yeah. What are you doing? Helping you take this sink out. <laughs> Looking sexy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Super hot. It is. <laughs> so the very first step that we had to do was take out that awful sink. Oh my gosh, you had no room in that bathroom. So Chris had the very labor-intensive job of cutting the uh, silicone or whatever kind of um, caulking that they used. Uh, we had to use a doll box cutter because at the time, you know, we're still unpacking everything, trying to find all of our tools. And that was like the best I could find at this, at the moment besides like a steak knife. So, um, he, it took him, I think probably 20 minutes to get through everything. And before we really started taking apart the sink, we capped the, um, hot and cold lines because I didn't want like my little one coming in there and messing with the knobs, you know, instead of just turning them off, we completely just capped them. That way there would be no risk that if he did turn the knob, water wouldn't spill out. So now we got the pedestal out. Chris is holding up the actual sink and there's little cleats that are kind of holding it up. And now he's going to be lifting it up very strong and taking it out. Put the caps on today. Turned off all the water, of course. This is our new sink. Show the people. Oh, sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I let me, I just want to see how these holes line up to these holes because we know that there's a stud there and that's going to be a little low if we have perfect. it there. Okay, so maybe we can go up. We can put it right Because I think 34 inches is standard. I have to measure there, it out. Drop it a little bit. Right, right there, there looks pretty good. Okay. And then and I... Can move those cleats. Or you can oh, we're going to have to take we're gonna have to take them off now because the hanger bolt system is back here and then we have the hanger bolts back there on the toilet. Okay. But yay, good job. And next I'll just get the sink set up but we'll paint and do all kinds of fun stuff in here. Okay. Good job. So the next step was to take out all of the fixtures. Um, this meant taking out the uh, toilet paper holder. And for some reason, uh, so they never put anything in a stud, which kind of blew my mind. But uh, they did everything with drywall anchors, and I could not get these things out, and I couldn't push them in for some reason. So what I did is I took a screw, and I screwed it in, and I used that as basically a handle to rip those suckers out. So, you know, now I have to patch everything. 
but okay so here I am I've patched everything and luckily for me I have a pretty flat texture so I didn't have to go in and like texturize anything I of course like did some moderate sanding in between uh, spackling and then you can tell I've taped everything off and now here I am going in with my pretty paint so what I initially did is I started painting with this uh, other color and it just the lighting is so bad it just didn't look right so this is called Greek Villa by Valspar all right so we're in a little bit of a situation this lovely little let me see if I can get it on camera this guy that like connects to your paint trap he connects to your paint trap and runs underneath and then comes up this piece right here is actually cemented on <laughs> um there should be a little stub out within a little adapter here that you can screw on to um, this last piece of your P-trap and they don't have it. I suspect maybe there might have been a leak there and then they just like heavily caked that stuff on. So um, I contacted one of um, my cousin's husband who is a contractor and he kind of gave me some guidance on how to deal with this thing but this is probably the hardest part of this whole bathroom reno and it's not really run out because it's really a makeover um it's just trying to figure out what to do with this thing um and that's just like kind of the reality of this stuff i mean you watch all those shows on HGTV and you can go, you know, all the fun, pretty, feel-good stuff um, and you forget about the the reality of it and it's not sexy like how you see on HGTV. It's like, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of um, staying up late, not sleeping, dreaming about your projects, which is exactly what <laughs> is happening to me now. And, um, yeah, so just thought I would kind of share what's going on with you with this. So the next part, my what I really need to do is I need to open up the wall and I need to see what's going on inside of it. So in order to do that, I'm going to take a speed square, my utility knife, and try and make a clean cut and just pull it off the wall, save it, so that I can put it back on the wall, and then um, tape and mud around where those joints are. That way I don't have to like make a custom, um, custom patch like I did for the one up above. Uh, so, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Oh, I'm so nervous. I wish I would have done this properly that way. I don't have to deal with it, but here we are. Nothing's perfect, and there's always going to be hurdles. So let's see if I can jump. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to kind of explain um, what I did with the plumbing situation. So I thought I would do a little sketch up. Okay, so behind my wall. There was something like this. <clears throat> this is my vent. I don't know if you can see that. This is my vent. And then this is, so the, the water comes down in and then it goes down um, the tube with gravity's help. With plumbing, you have to have air to vent it. Else it's like um, when you uh, take a water bottle full of water and you squeeze out. All of the water, it gets bubbles, it goes bup, 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 like that. That's why you have to have a vent. So, um, that, anyways, that's how this plumbing was connected. Um, and then there was a two by four that was running this way, and they had had it hole sawed out. That way, um, the pipe was able to pass through the two by four. So when I was measuring, what I did is I cut 
two inches from this. So I took my tape measure, you'll see in the video, and I measured two inches. And then I made my line right here on the tube. And that's where I cut. And I did two inches because inside of a tube, I think if I remember correctly, it's either an inch or a half inch of like a little plastic rim that they, the two pieces need to make contact so that you're able to get like a really good strong glue up. Um, so I wanted to be able to live or leave myself some room. So when I put the coupling and a coupling is basically female sides on both sides. And what I mean by female sides is, you know, there's, they call them male sides like this. Okay. This would be considered a male side. And this is a female side because this one can hold and snap on it together. You see what I mean? So a coupling is a female, two double-sided female side that a pipe can go in one side and another pipe can come on and then it can wrap it around it to create that, um, that good joint that you need so that you can have consistent flow and it's not gonna leak on you. So I measured two inches out and then I didn't show it on the video because I was kind of nervous when I was doing it, but, um, First, you need to prime your, well, actually, excuse me, first you need to make sure that you get all your burrs off. So when you're using those hand cranks or you use like a little, um, a saw or even, even a miter saw, a miter saw would have like worked so much better. But if you do something like that, you need to make sure that you clean off your burrs. And a burr is any kind of little plastic remnant that is pulled down when you cut. So uh, you just clean the inside of the tube and the outside of the tube, and then you can put your primer on. There's not really um, a quick rush with primer. What I did is I marked and did dry fits and I marked all my tubing so that um, I knew where that needed to connect it and I could put a line where it connected and a dash and a dash. So <clears throat> let me just go get some tubes. Okay, so I'm back with my tubes. Here's just basic, I think it's two inch PVC. It usually has like script on the side. I don't remember all my numbers, guys. I'm, I'm still new at this. So take everything I say with a grain of salt or sand or whatever the saying is. Um, anyway, so what I was saying is when you do your dry fit, um, you lock all your pieces together and you're like, okay, this is perfect. This is exactly where I need it. And then what I would do is I would mark a line and then I would know, okay, this, it needs to stop here at that line and to make sure that it's fully in all the way. And this is where we know that we're in all the way is when it meets that black line. And then, you know, some pieces are directional. So if you have your spout or your um, your spout where the the step out where your um, drain is going to hook up to, you don't want it peeking down or peeking up because then you're not going to be able to click into it. It needs to be level. So how to ensure that is you rough fit it and you get it um, you know dry fit it on and then you put these side notches on. I'm trying to do this in the camera. That way you know that you know when you put on your tube when you're gluing it, you know, oh, okay, I gotta, I gotta move this one up so that it meets. That's how you know that you're getting everything nice and even. Um, so, and there's a lot of books out there. There's one by Black and Decker at Barnes and Noble, and I can uh, list it down below, but it is great. And it kind of walks you through like the whole plumbing process. And there's also a lot of great YouTubers that are professional plumbers. And they, uh, sorry, my camera's really bad. Or maybe it's just me. <laughs> Anyways, they are really great at explaining how to do plumbing. So anyways, the bores are off. It's dry fitted. It's marked. You can start priming. You can prime all of your joints at once if you want. Um, there's really not much of a time frame. Like you have to start gluing after the primer. Um, so I like to prime everything really good. On the female insides, I prime, and then on the outsides of the male, I prime, and this is a coupling. Pop. 
it goes over the joint. And um, once you do that, then it's glue time. And glue time, it's tricky. I What I like to do is I only glue one, one joint at a time. That way I'm able to get everything nice and fast because you really only have about 30 seconds to work with it before it's pretty much just done. So um, you glue it, smack it on, hold it because sometimes it can like if you're like gluing something on gravity, that thing is really slick for a couple seconds. So I like to just kind of hold it and press it and make sure my joints are lined up and everything looks good. And then when I feel like it's not going to move on me, I can let go and start preparing myself for the next joint. But you know, it's not rocket science and I was able to figure it out. <laughs> so you guys can too. Um, and like I said, I'm going to list um, a couple YouTube pages that I use that were really helpful to me. And uh, I just hope you guys have success with uh, whatever kind of plumbing adventure you decide to embark on. If you do, you don't have to, you know. Um, anyways, but yeah, get back to the video. Oh, oops. <laughs> Irreversible damage. I'm not a plumber. I'm just kidding. I mean, like, I'm not a plumber, but we can fix it. We can get this done. It's going to be great. It'll be right. And I'm not going to have this mess, which I don't know why they would do that. Interesting. I don't know why that is there. They literally connected the P-trap to the elbow. It makes no sense. Huh? Oh, we got some friends in there too. Gross. Say hi! Oh, you're talking to the camera. <laughs> okay, so next I did the sink. And I'm going to be talking really quick right here. But uh, I used plumber's putty and uh, plumber's tape. And I would hand crank it as far as I could go, like, without a lot of force. And I do a quarter turn. And then I would stop and I didn't, I don't have any leaks and it's been great. And so that's my advice. Use plumber's uh, tape on the threaded parts and plumber's putty underneath the um, drain stopper on the sink. Okay, so I didn't show mounting my sink, but basically all I did is I put a one by six in between in behind the wall and then I replastered and then I drilled my two holes, screwed in my anchor bolts, put my sink on it, and then used the nuts and washers that came with my sink to then tighten it and fix it. Um if you want, you can pause my little animation here and then you can just kind of read. Uh, for some reason, my animation came up weird. It shows me drilling without the wall already being re-drywalled. It's easier if you just drill it after it's drywalled. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, water. water. Okay, we just installed the toilet. Um, let's see if she works. <laughs> Please, no leaks. Yes. All right. Get the boards up. Okay, disheveled hair, sleepy eyes, and we're still going on this dang bathroom. So now I'm setting my laser line. I marked out where my studs are, did some configurations to figure out how far apart to put my boards, and I'm going to put the first one in and see how I like the height. Okay, so almost 
sides are done. I did a spackle on these guys. And I'll just keep doing that spackle over here on this side. Um, it's just flush to the wall since it doesn't really have any trim. And over here on that little lip, you can kind of see like a little hangout right there. I'm just going to get my rasp and kind of just make it like a little angle so it looks smooth and it blends in. And then we'll start with uh, these guys, the vertical ones. Exciting! Okay, painting clothes are on, and I'm about to just do a quick little sand again on my boards. Make sure any of those, um, you know, those uh, knots that are kind of raised up, that those all get sanded down. Um, and I just want to briefly talk about why I didn't paint these before I actually got them installed. So, um, for me, I didn't want to use MDF because it's bathroom. And I know it's not like a bathroom. It has a shower and that's going to get tons of humidity, but it's still a bathroom. So I didn't want to use MDF and just have it, you know, basically crumble on me, you know, if somebody went crazy and splashed water all over the place. Um, and then secondly is we're moving. Uh, we're, I guess I should say we're just moving in. And we have boxes all over the garage, as you can tell. So I don't really have like a designated spot where I can roll out and have boards just laying down that are 63 inches long and just paint them. I don't really have any room right now. So I figured I'd get them up on the wall and then I can paint them then. So we're gonna paint again. And um, I'm gonna, you know, of course, kind of tape this guy off and make sure he stays cute. Same with my little toilet back there. Um, and then we're gonna do the light fixture. This light fixture, uh, it's, it's kind of dark in here, honestly. I feel like it's not a very bright bathroom, so I wanted something that had more bulbs. So I keep going with like the, the gold, brushed gold theme, and we're gonna have it up on the light. And then we'll do some final touches and accessorizing, which is always the best part, I think. Uh, and hopefully it'll come out good. Oh, wallpaper. I forgot to mention wallpaper. On this half of the wall and up is going to be a really cool wallpaper. So stay tuned to see what it looks like. Okay, it took me all night long just to do those two squares. Oh my gosh, it's, like if you're a wallpaper person, bravo, kudos to you, because I don't know how anyone does wallpaper. So anyways, I've got this strip here that needs to go up and then we'll work on my light and get that light situation started and just keep going around the room. Let's see if I can get the camera set up. I didn't mention, but this is actually a peel and stick wallpaper. Uh, it is not actual wallpaper. I did not want to put that up because my style changes like the wind. <laughs> it comes and goes. Some days I'm feeling crazy with lots of colors and next thing I know I just want brown everywhere. You just never know. So I didn't want to do anything that was going to take a ton of work to remove. So I will say the only thing is is I put this really close to um, a heat source which is my light. So uh, the pieces uh, eventually through time that were really close to the light did shrink just like oh like a sixteenth of an inch like super tiny and you'll see it in the after shot it's not that big a deal and I have more paper so it doesn't really bother me
nine minutes for one piece. That's a record. So now that all the painting, the sanding, the wallpaper, the lighting, the plumbing is all done, it's final touch time. My favorite part. So I have um, this canvas painting that I did for my husband. It's a it's a painting of a door that uh, we saw in Rome uh, when we stayed at Rome. I forget what hotel it was called, but. Um, Anyways, after every night of tourism, we would go and we would walk down and grab some gelato at this like really cute, kind of off the beaten trail spot. Um, and I think every single time I got pistachio, <laughs> I'm afraid to try new foods, <laughs> but Chris got all kinds of stuff. So it was just like kind of a sweet little memory. So I wanted to paint it. And uh, we would walk by this door every single time we'd go get ice cream. So I like the colors in it. It has a lot of the colors that I have in my wallpaper, the blues, the greens, the grays, um, but then it also has like pops of like rusty red and brown. So I have this old frame for it, but it's huge, it's so big, but look at that, oh, it's gorgeous. And it's actually, um, I got it at the Goodwill and it actually had like a real piece of art in it that um, was from Japan. I don't know if I can show you this, but you can see like <laughs> writings, Japan frame company. And then they actually have like a number on it. So somebody popped the art out of it and sold the frame. So sad, but I'm using the frame and I don't have any pieces of wood left. So I have pieces of a bed that we don't have anymore. I sold it and forgot to put the uh, lights coming out and forgot to put the um, the slats that you put on the bed frame with it. So I just have these pieces of really nice wood hanging out. So I figured I'd just chop them up and use them for a frame. So this frame right here, I cut my four pieces. I'm using um, a Craig jig that my dad got me and some Craig jig nails and um, I'm making an inner frame that's gonna go here on this inside griff and then I'm gonna have quarter inch shoe molding to go around an even smaller frame into this guy so that my painting will fit. <laughs> it's a lot of work for you know, just a simple little painting I did for my husband, but I think it'll be cute. You know, I think it'll be nice. It Honestly, it's gonna have kind of like that same vibe of what I'm going for in my bathroom, kind of like a modern feel with vintage touches. So um, the sleek uh, black is gonna look really great inside of this super ornate frame. And this frame actually has like velvet on the inside, so it's bringing some texture, so. Yeah, it's fun. Okay. All right. Okay. I got her all framed up. Uh, so let's see if I can give you a closer look. So it's still a little wet, so you can see some wet spots on it. But um, basically, I just used three inch a little board here and then did a quarter inch molding. And I didn't wanna have to staple this canvas into here. So when I did the quarter inch molding, I just um, framed it around the piece itself. Um, so it can pop in and out and it's actually like really snug see if I can demonstrate. See, it pops out. That way, if I wanna put a different picture in there, I can. Um, but she is really tight in there. Let's see if I can get her back in. So, now I'm just gonna go hang her up and see how she looks in the room. I think it came out pretty good. Um, so, I guess if I don't end up using this in my powder room, I can always use it um, somewhere else in the house and that way I don't just have like, literally how I did it the last time is I 
hot glued it. So this just looked bad. It didn't look as good and I think it kind of classes up my, you know, basic door painting. So, okay, let's see how it looks in the room. Okay, it's all done. So this is the, I just want you to remember what it looked like before. That massive sink, awful, bad lighting, huge brown mirrors and chunkiness, and it's just really heavy for a tiny space. And this is the after. It's light, it's bright, it's airy, it has some depth, it has mixed metal tones with the brasses and the blacks. Um, I absolutely love it. I think that painting turned out great and it actually looks like something. And uh, that's the light fixture. It kind of has like a bartender feel to me, like kind of like a barber shop, I guess. And then that hand is from Indonesia. It has the blacks and the golds. That's my grandmother's tea towel. It's vintage, super cute. Vintage little trash can there. A cute little cat toilet paper holder. And I just think it really came out well. I'm very pleased with it. We get compliments on it all the time. And uh, I just love it. And I also wanted to say this mirror that you see. I'm going to cut to a better shot so you can actually see it. Oh, that little acorn holds tampons. So if you're ever over and need a tampon, I actually threw that piece. I'm a potter as well. I want to do some pottery videos. So yeah. Um, anyways, well, I'm all over the place with this video, aren't I? That's okay. We're going to come to the mirror pretty soon. And when you see the mirror, take a good look at it. This was my grandmother's grandma's mirror I think um, it has beautiful detail that kind of chippy mirror glass kind of like engraved it's so so stunning and then that hand sanitizer is so modern and I love the juxtaposition of a brand new new piece that's modern and kind of cold mixed with like a vintage warm you know, lovely piece that's that has tons of detail. I just think there's something about the combination of the two. And then, uh, yeah, that tea towel just fits right in. It has the reds, the blues, the greens. It's a cool little sailor ship on there. I mean, it just, it's, it really works out great. And I'm so pleased with this. And I know my video quality isn't the best. I'm having some technical difficulties. But if you want some really cool pictures of, of the before and after, go check out my Instagram page. It's Amelia Bacolis. And I have a lot of really good side-by-side -side before and afters and kind of more of like the rough part of the, you know, of like the toilets being gone and stuff like that, that, that can be a little bit more scary. But yeah, if you love this content, please subscribe, please like. Um, I am new and I'm still getting my, my sea legs underneath me, but I am enthusiastic and I'm a stay at home mom. And this is what I do all day is remodel. And this project I actually just completed. I redid my son's bathroom. I redid all the rough and plumbing. I made that terrazzo countertop and I have a video to show you how I plumbed that sink and, you know, uh, I've learned a lot since this project and I would love to share the knowledge that I learned with you. So please follow me, uh, subscribe, head over to my Instagram. I'm always posting stuff over there. And yeah, I just come along on this journey with me. I'd love to get to meet you. Thanks.